Knock, knock. Hi guys. I'm Harvard dermatologist, Dr. Abby Waldman, and I'm going to show you how to repair your damaged skin barrier. Okay. So this is your skin barrier. And this is what happens when you damage your skin barrier. So first, the very top layer of your skin is composed of something called the stratum corneum. This is another name for the skin barrier. And it's literally a wall of dead skin cells that coats your skin, essentially. It provides a tight coat to keep water in, and it keeps things from the outside, like bacteria and viruses and fungus from getting in. And you can think of it like a brick wall. So these are little dead, flat, keratinocytes, little skin cells called corneocytes. And in between them is the mortar that's holding them together. So the mortar is different proteins and fats that really hold it together. And that's ceramides, cholesterol, and lipids. So you can think of it like a brick and mortar. On the very top layer, there's like a layer of sebum, sweat, and that kind of provides a little bit of an extra rain jacket, essentially, from the outside. So when you damage your skin barrier, what you are doing is you are breaking down this brick house, this brick wall that is protecting everything underneath. And what's underneath? It's your skin, it's your living skin. It's the epidermis, which are the living skin cells, and the dermis, which is below that, which is basically the kind of the structure of the house, so to speak. It has the fibroblasts and the collagen, and it makes your skin sort of the skin you feel where it's, it's nice and plump. And then underneath that is fat and muscle um, and other things that compose the subcutaneous tissue. So when you damage your skin barrier, what happens, you create a hole, and now all that water that was being trapped in can get out, and all of the bacteria and viruses and fungus and antigens that are in everything that we're touching and coming across, now can just flood right in, and they can get into the living cells, essentially. Now they don't have that protective barrier. They're right there where your immune system can see them. So what happens, your immune system shows up, and you get inflammation, you get redness, itching, pain, you get a rash, you get breakouts, and then you get dryness because all that water is going out of your skin. And so a lot of the things that we complain about, right, like sort of breakouts, itching, rashes, all of that can often be explained from a disruption of your skin barrier. So I'm gonna share with you some key steps to prevent disruption of your skin barrier, and then also to repair it once it has been damaged. So one of the most common ways to disrupt your skin barrier is by using too harsh of a cleansing agent, essentially. If you use bar soap, oftentimes it's not pH balanced. And what that does is it's too basic for this outer, very acidic area of the skin. And so that can cause breakdown of the outer layer of the skin barrier, and again, lead to these problems. So you really wanna use a gentle cleanser, really gentle, you know, something that's not stripping that outer layer. You don't wanna really use like harsh scrubs that are really irritating the skin. And so especially areas with very thin epidermis, thin stratum corneum, like the face, the eyes, around the mouth, you really wanna have a very gentle cleanser. The other thing you wanna consider is exfoliation. Exfoliation is amazing. If you use a chemical exfoliant, an AHA, BHA, oftentimes these acids are great for removing some of these dead cells and revealing the beautiful new skin underneath, but you can overdo it, right? So in removing these dead cells, if you remove too many layers, oops, now you have a big hole where water is now leaking out and bacteria is coming in and you get redness and too much peeling and maybe even breakouts. So if you are exfoliating, you wanna keep it to maybe like once, twice, and maybe three times a week if you're a pro depending on what you're using. And again, avoid exfoliating with like really harsh scrubs. Think of it like throwing rocks at, you know, a brick wall, right? You're just kind of getting random holes. There are some other exfoliation that can, again, turn over the skin too much. Most of the time, like retinol and retinoids are gonna be okay, but you can overdo it. Again, to the point where you've really kind of strip down that, that outer skin barrier and you're getting redness and breakouts. And those are signs that you just wanna back off. Also, there might be something you're coming into contact with that's sort of unique to you and that you have an allergy to that ingredient um, that is basically either irritating the skin for you or even causing your immune system to kind of try to go up and attack it. And so the most common ingredients that cause those type of reactions are um, fragrance is a big one. Formalin or formaldehyde releasers is a common one. It's present in lots of different 
products that you might use on your face, lanolin, as well as many others. And again, what might cause that type of reaction in one person is not gonna cause it in another person. And the third thing you can do to help prevent skin barrier damage is to just use a basic moisturizer every single day. Anytime you cleanse, to put a moisturizer back on. Because even with a gentle cleanser, you're sort of stripping these like outer little keratinocytes and you want to do that. You want to kind of clean the skin or remove some of the dead cells, but at the same time, you want to be able to protect yourself, protect your skin. And using a basic moisturizer that contains ceramides, um, hyaluronic acid, fatty acids, or lipids, those can basically kind of recreate that stratum corneum and provide some protection from the outside world. And so if you do have a damaged skin barrier and you're having like a lot of redness, itching, rash, breakouts, especially it happens a lot right in this area um, near the nose, sometimes around the eyes as well. And everything feels just like tight and uncomfortable. The key here is to sort of back off, keep things really simple. Skincare can get really complex and it can be very difficult to figure out what is causing the problem. And so it's really good to just kind of take a break for a few days from any retinoids or exfoliation or any sort of serums, basically any sort of active ingredient, just like take a rest, let your skin kind of reboot. The things you do want to continue are gentle cleanser and moisturizer. Now, sometimes your basic moisturizer that contains ceramides is not enough. You know, you'll look and see a lot of these repair creams, ceramides is the main ingredient. Cause again, that's the mortar for the bricks. The Barrier Renewal Complex by Elta MD, ceramides. The Rock Barrier Renew PM Moisturizer is ceramides. But sometimes that's not enough. When you really have damaged your skin barrier, it's not enough to just replace the mortar because you're not able to replace it and heal it fast enough. So you still are getting a lot of water loss. And so one of the most effective things you can do is actually put like a little Band-Aid over this. Now, how do you do that? You can't actually put a Band-Aid over your face, right? And so you wanna use an occlusive moisturizer, an occlusive emollient, which actually kind of seals over. And there's lots of different ones out there. Again, a lot of the most common barrier repairs have some sort of an emollient in them. And it can be as simple as just like Aquaphor or Vaseline, a petroleum-based or mineral oil-based occlusive emollient. The Rock Barrier Renew also has like a mineral oil, a petroleum based emollient that seals the skin and provides a band aid to allow it to just do its thing and heal itself. Not everyone likes the idea of putting a petroleum based emollient on their skin. Often, glycerin based or shea butter based creams will kind of provide a very similar seal. So, one is the Dermatologic Stabilizing Repair Cream, a big favorite is the Cicaplast Balm 5 but you can use something as simple or natural as coconut oil. It's gonna provide that same type of occlusive band-aid to allow this to seal off and allow everything to heal. Usually healing is going to take place over anywhere from like three to seven days. And as long as you avoid damaging the skin barrier again, then you should be good to reintroduce your products. Now, sometimes you're gonna have to reintroduce them very slowly. Again, you know, if you were exfoliating five times a week, then really it's important to kind of back off or maybe back off your retinoid a little bit. If you do suspect that it's your tretinoin or your retinol that is causing uh, a barrier breakdown, then actually applying a barrier moisturizer before you put on your retinoid can help. That's called the sandwich effect, um, where you put on your barrier cream, you put on your retinoid, and then you put on your normal ceramide-based moisturizer on top, and that reduces the strength of the retinoid, and it makes it less irritating and less likely to cause rash and breakouts and pain. I'll leave a link with product recommendations down below. I'm Dr. Abby Waldman, be well.